My name is Kunle Olukotun and I'm a professor in both the Electrical Engineering Department and the Computer Science Department at Stanford and my area of research is parallel hardware and software. So IP in the open is uh, really about uh, creating IP with funding from companies in which the resulting uh, artifacts that get produced, both software, uh, uh, hardware or IP is, uh, is completely in the open. It, it, it means that there's a promise that it, it won't be patented and that no one uh, will, will uh, have to license it because it will be in the public domain. So uh, IP in the open is, is best when you have a consortium of companies involved in some sort of affiliates program and uh, the, the results of the affiliates program you would not want to be owned by any one company because of course uh, they're all jointly funding the research and so in order to prevent any issues with uh, arguments about the ownership of the IP the, the uh, agreement is that all the IP will be open sourced and will be, be open and free uh, to, to be used by any of the, the companies and what the companies get in return of course is early access to the ideas, right? And so before it goes in, you know, the public domain. More importantly, uh, the sorts of problems that we are focusing on are ones which are motivated by the problems that uh, come from, from the funding companies. So they're more interested in the IP than, than potentially other people might be. What companies want is to stay ahead, right? And, and it, that's better, staying ahead is more important than trying to protect, you know, where they are today. Right, and so uh, one of the, the problems that one would have if you try to uh, lock the IP down uh, with any one particular company, one, you know, our current affiliates funding model wouldn't work, and two, the whole process would be, uh, would be slow and would involve a lot of uh, legal uh, involvement and, and uh, would actually prevent the, the research from moving forward as quickly as it does. The idea of these affiliates programs are that instead of individual faculty going and trying uh, to get money from companies that you pull together a consortium of, of, of faculty working on, on a particular research direction and it gives both the companies uh, the view that there's a, this, this group of faculty which is uh, focused on a particular uh, area and presents a bigger effort than any individual faculty and so uh, so that's attractive to, to the companies uh, but it's also uh, useful because it gets faculty together and uh, collaboration between faculty is what uh, produces greater impact. We have a, a, a group at Stanford uh, involved in, in what's called the pervasive parallelism lab and one of the things that, that we have uh, uh, promoted uh, over, the, over the years that has gotten quite a bit of traction in many different uh, arenas, uh, both in the high performance computing area, in the, the data science area, and, and in other areas is this whole notion of high level domain specific languages as a way of developing uh, uh, application software. And so the notion is that as the world moves towards parallelism and heterogeneous parallelism, that you have a wide variety of architectures out there and the programming problem, especially when you're focused on high performance, is becoming uh, really intractable for most application developers. And so this notion that the way to solve it is to really raise the level of abstraction and, and, and create environments for domain-specific languages uh, that can be used by application developers is, is, is the result. And as I said, it, it, we've both developed uh, new domain-specific languages and infrastructure for developing domain specific languages and this has been put in the open source and this has gotten traction but I think even more importantly the whole concept of domain specific languages as a way of, of doing software development is something that's got a lot more currency uh, since we started to work on it. We still need to get these ideas into uh, industrial use but I think that, that we've come a long way and, and so now it's a matter of kind of getting these sorts of solutions in uh, to the industry. And, uh, and that will take, uh, you know, you know, something, it will take uh, these ideas to be picked up by industry and, and, and commercialized. Or potentially even the open source implementations that people, uh, that we've, we've developed, uh, if, if those start to gain traction, that's also a, a possibility.